For this tutorial, the materials we will need is a piece of fondant. Modeling chocolate also works very well. We have some water, powdered sugar, a couple of fluffy paint brushes. I have these two tools right here, just something with a sharp edge and something with a thin, I, I use the, the scoop end, it's a very thin end. You can also use this end on this tool, but today we're gonna probably use the scoop end on this little tool here. I have a small rolling pin. I have a small knife for cutting. I have a little bit of corn syrup. I'm gonna show you a little trick with that that you could probably use on a lot of your cookies. For this cookie, you really want to use a no spread sugar cookie recipe to get some nice clean edges. This is just royal icing. There are a lot of recipes for it online. They all pretty much work the same. So just find your favorite one. If you're not familiar with piping royal icing, it really is not that difficult. Do not be intimidated by it. Just do a little bit of practicing. I will also be doing a little bit of airbrushing. We're going to airbrush the background and we're going to airbrush um, the, the bottom piece on this. I'm also going to come in and airbrush a little bit of white over the top. If you do not have an airbrush, you do not have to worry about that. Anything that we're airbrushing, you can come in and certainly dry brush over it. You can also do sponging. Sugar Prism Edible Acrylic is very versatile. Um, if you do have an airbrush and you haven't used it, do not be intimidated by it. It's, it's very simple. I'm gonna show you all the consistencies that you need to use in your airbrush. Let's get started on sculpting the little bear. So for the head, you just take a little piece of your fondant or modeling chocolate. And for the body, what I did was I pulled a slightly bigger piece for the body. Just take the smaller piece, roll it out, and flatten it. Flatten the bottom piece a little bit. That's where we're going to connect to his body. So just flatten it out. You have a little disc. Set that aside. I think I'm going to get a little bit bigger piece here. Roll out the body piece. Again, flatten it out. Of course, you want them even thickness. Flatten the top where he's going to connect to the head. I just have a tiny bit of water here for gluing the head and the pieces together. Sugar is very sticky. And then I just stick them together. If, if you prefer to use uh, some kind of glue, you can go ahead and use it. In my experience, I found that sugar is very sticky and holds very well. We're gonna set that aside and start working on the other pieces and give it just a second to get a little bit firm. Okay, the head and the body have had a couple minutes to firm up a little bit and then stick together. So before we go on to the facial features and the legs. I'm going to show you how I got this little impression to form his chest and his arms. All I did was I took at the end of a thin paintbrush. You just come in this way, this way. Give it a nice deep indention. I'm going to push up on the bottom of that V a little bit to soften him up a little bit. We don't want a sharp edge right there. Okay, so now we have his chest and his arms come in with something sharp, a little sharp edge. And I just cut halfway down the middle there. You don't have to cut all the way through, just enough to give them little hands. And then what I did was I go one, two, three, 
just push in one, two, three to form some fingers. That is it for the body and the head. We're gonna set that aside and make his little ears and his facial features. Okay, let's add his little ears. Very simple, right? Just two little pieces of your fondant or modeling chocolate. Roll them both into a small ball. Flatten them out a tiny bit like this. And then what I do is, again, take the end of your paintbrush. A ball tool works great for that also. Just give it a little indention. And we're gonna flatten one side. We're gonna flatten the side that it will connect to the head here. Set that there. We're gonna flatten it very slightly. For the bear, you kind of want the ears a little offset here. If you put them too high, He's gonna sort of have mouse ears. So what we wanna do is we sort of wanna angle them to the side like this. Again, just touch a little bit of water. Or your sugar glue, either one. Stick the little ears on. Okay, let me zoom in so you can see that. Very simple. Let's work on his muzzle. You want another little piece of your fondant or modeling chocolate, about the same size as the ear. Now for this, you don't want to flatten it down too much. You want to give his face a little bit of dimension. So we're just going to Flatten it very slightly. And then I sort of give it an oval, kind of a slightly oblong look. And the nose isn't directly in the middle of the face. It's kind of slightly below the center. Just stick that on right there. He's kind of got a little piggy face looking right now until we get <laughs> until we get his nose on. Before we stick his nose on, we're gonna give him a little smile. Okay, for his smile, we take this tool. You can use this end, but it really is kind of pointy, so I prefer the scoop end to give him a little smile. What I did was I just, you have it this way, and I turn it upside down. And I just push it in right below the muzzle, and you want to give it a good indention so you can see it. Come back in. And that's it. The smile is very easy. That ear is being a little stubborn. All right, let's give him a little nose. For the nose, very, very tiny piece. Um, the nose, again, like the muzzle, is slightly oblong. Can you see that? You can see, his, you can see there his nose is rather oblong. It isn't perfectly round. Come in with a very tiny piece of your fondant. We kind of want to stick the nose up towards the top of the muzzle. Okay. Give it a little press, but don't flatten it out. So you can see the legs, the feet stick out slightly past the ears. So we'll use that as a guide. We'll measure it there. 
it looks slightly longer than this, but that's okay because when we push in to form the feet, um, the tube is gonna get a little bit shorter anyway. We're gonna put a little bit of water right here and let it start getting sticky. So to form the feet, you just take this little snake. You wanna pinch about halfway around each side to make it look like he has little feet or toes sticking up. Okay, so you're kind of pushing in and pinching those feet up like this. And then what I did is the same as the fingers. Just come in and give it very gently push three. I know they have more than three toes. So what I did here was I just sort of came in and I pushed here and here to make it look like he had a little bottom sitting in the snow. So we just push here, push here. And then I also gave him little indentions on his eyes. I pushed from the side like this to make that eye socket extend out a little bit. Give it a turn. Push there. And that's it. We're going to set him aside to dry to make sure all of his little pieces are stuck on well before we start painting. For the scarf, what I did, we're going to put him right there. If you just roll out a little snake like this, we're going to put a little powdered sugar on it so it doesn't stick. Okay, just roll out your little snake. Take your rolling pin and just flatten it out like that. And I just cut two little pieces. I cut one short, I would say maybe an inch long. So you see here, you have the shorter piece and one longer piece. You just cut a shorter piece. And then this one, you want to sort of eyeball it, kind of measure across his neck and to come out, stick out. So I would say probably double the length of your short piece. And then because our little bear has no neck, yes, he is a no neck. What I did was I cut this end, I just tapered this end very thin like that. Okay. And then come in with this you kind of want to work fast because your fondant modeling chocolate, all this stuff it likes to dry up. So that's a pretty good size I would say. Take that one back off. Maybe cut that one down. What you want to do is just take your cutting tool, give it a little fringe, a little bit of water on that piece. Stick them together like this. The shorter piece goes underneath the longer piece. We're gonna set that aside. Okay, our little bear has had time to dry. Little ears and nose and all the little pieces are stuck on pretty good, so let's start painting. I am using just a little bit of water to constitute the paint. You can certainly use alcohol if you want to, if you need a faster drying time. You can certainly use alcohol with sugar prism paint. You can see I'm just adding a little bit, stirring it around really good, and you get just a really nice consistency, just like acrylic paint. So there we have our teddy bear brown.
You can see it washes right off uh, with water. And we also have our golden mustard yellow. Okay. And it really just takes a small amount to cover a pretty good size area. For coverage like this, you really want to use a soft bristle brush. Make sure you get down in all of the little cracks, his eyes, down into his little smile. Make sure you're covering all of the edges. You don't have to worry about the back because he is going to be stuck on the cookie. Giving this little bear a coat of the mustard yellow. And then we're going to come back in after and do a little shading. Give a little definition and shading and sort of a, kind of a rustic look with our teddy bear brown. That looks pretty good like that. You can come right in with the teddy bear brown and I'll show you the consistency that needs to be for the type of painting that we're going to do on this little guy. You can see here we've got the layer of mustard underneath and then you can see how we're going to come in through here with a little bit of brown and sort of give him a little more definition and character, sort of a rust teddy bear look. I'm taking a little bit of my brown and I'm putting it over here and I'm adding just a little more water to it because you really don't want a heavy coverage. Mix a little bit of the brown with the mustard yellow and we're just coming in around the body, around the face, through the neck. You can see it's taken on a little bit more definition taking on that sort of rustic look okay you want the paint a little bit thinner for this application a little bit down underneath the legs in the bottom Okay, and I've just touched, touched it a little bit. If you get it too dark, don't worry about it. This is not a stain. You can always come back with a clean damp brush and you can pick up some of the color, say like that. If you got a little dark in areas you don't want it, you can always go back and pick up a little bit of the color. We're going to give him just a couple minutes to dry like that. Next, we're going to paint the inside of his little ears and the bottom of his feet. You can use hotty pink, um, you can use peachy keen, or you can use the combination. And I really prefer the combination of the two colors. For those areas, it gives a, just a nice soft color in there. Again, just a little dab of water. Mix it around to, let's say, a, a light to medium consistency. You don't want it too heavy. You can see in here, just, just a little light touch of color. So we're going to mix the two of those together. And it doesn't take much. It's a lot more paint than I really needed for these areas. A little dab on the bottom of the feet. For the eyes and nose, we have Tuxedo Black. And you really want to use a very fine paintbrush for this. And then a little dab on the nose. And that is it for his facial features. I'm going to show you how to paint the scarf and put that on. 
before our scarf starts drying up and getting stiff, we're going to come in and add colors for the scarf. You can see we have Grinchy Green and we have Boysenberry Stripes. The consistency you want for the paint would be medium to thick. And of course the thicker you have it, the faster it's going to dry for you. So just a little quick coat. Make sure you get the edges. And the reason why we paint the scarf before we put it on the bear is so we're not getting it all messy on up under his chin and on his neck. It's just a little bit easier to do this way. Come back in with boysenberry. Kind of medium thick consistency. Add your little stripes. And while that scarf is still pliable, what you want to do is add just a little bit of water to create a sticky surface for the scarf. Just give it a little gentle push. And then I like to come in and lift a couple of those in pieces to make it look like he's blowing in the wind. And that is it for our little bear. Let's move on to the cookie. We're going to start painting this bottom piece first, the stand to the snow globe. And we're going to start with our teddy bear brown. The consistency that you want to mix it is going to look pretty much like this. It's thin, but it still has some body to it. You want it to be able to still go through your airbrush, so you want it somewhat thin, but you could see that it still has a bit of thickness to it. Everybody's airbrushes are different, so just experiment a little bit with yours. I have a larger, more industrial type airbrush, but it's, it does work through the smaller decorator airbrushes. I've used it in, in pretty much every style. If you feel like you need something to block the top part of your snow globe, all I did was I took the cookie cutter that we used on the cookie. I laid it out on a piece of kind of thick cardstock paper and I cut that out. What you can do is use it as a block while you're airbrushing that brown on top. I'm just going to give it a couple quick coats, kind of angle it here, get around the sides. That's it, just a few quick coats like that. We're going to give it a couple minutes to dry a little bit. Now the reason I didn't ice the bottom part of the snow globe cookie is to give it more of a wooden snow globe base look. Next we're going to mix the shade of blue here. We want for the inside of the snow globe. Um, this isn't a real dark blue and we used, uh, we used midnight blue and white. I always remember when you're mixing your colors together, you always want to add the dark to the light. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm just using water to mix my paint. Um, if you have a preference to using alcohol like Everclear or vodka, you, you can also use that. You're going to get a quicker drying time with the alcohol. 
If you do not prefer to use alcohol in the paint, you certainly do not have to. The water works perfectly fine. I think that's a nice color for the inside of our snow globe. What I'm going to do is just put a portion of this into my airbrush because we're going to come back in and add a little bit darker blue to it to get sort of a sky shading on that. Again, if you need something to block this area, just cut yourself a small piece of paper or something to block that. The key to preventing a lot of overspray is not pulling back on your trigger far. And just, have, you gotta have a little patience with this, but keep your airbrush at a nice vertical angle when you're airbrushing with or without a stencil. For the inside of the snow globe in this bottom piece, I am using an airbrush. You do not need to use an airbrush if you don't have an airbrush or if you're not comfortable with an airbrush. Anything that we're doing with the airbrush, you can do with a dry brush or a sponge. I'm just going to give it a couple of light coats, just like that. Very quick and simple. Give it a couple minutes to dry. While that is drying, we're going to add a little bit more of our Midnight Blue to our mix. You can see I still have some left in my airbrush. This paint truly does go a long way. It does not take a lot of paint to cover any area. We're going to throw a little bit more Midnight Blue into that mix. Give it a stir around. And we just want it a couple shades darker than the inside of the snow globe, just to give it a little shading, a little dimension, sort of a night sky look. Okay, I think that's pretty good. You can see the consistency of it. Obviously, the thicker you have your paint, the faster drying time you're going to get on it. This is when you kind of want to angle your airbrush a little bit. You don't want this um, super vertical angle. We're just going to sort of cover this top area sort of at an angle, and it doesn't take much, just a couple sweeps. See, we're just darkening the top, sort of giving it a little almost ombre effect, I guess. Come down just a little bit, and that is it. Next, we're going to add this little snowy piece the teddy bear is sitting on. Take a small piece of your fondant or modeling chocolate. All I did was just roll it out. And then just kind of roll it. It doesn't have to be neat when he's sitting on snow. I actually sort of make it a little bit bumpy. And then I taper it on the ends. You don't want it to go up too high. Just a little mound of snow for him to sit on. Our paint is still a little bit tacky, so we're going to get things to stick very nicely on like this. Just stick it on the bottom. Give it a couple little hills like this. Snow globes have this little plaque that shows the year they were made. All you have to do is Roll out a little ball of your fondant or modeling chocolate, flatten it, make a little oval. You can see it's nice and flat. Now for this, you're going to want to touch the back because the bottom part of our cookie is fairly dry. So you want to touch the back with a little bit of sugar, glue, or, or water, and it sticks right on. We're just going to set that right there and give it time to dry while we're working on the rest of our cookie. Next, we're going to add our little bear, and I'm just adding a little bit of water. You can use sugar glue to the back. Okay, stick them on right there. That looks like a pretty good spot. We're going to push that snow up so he doesn't look like he's just floating midair. Mustard yellow on that plaque. And we're going to let that dry before we put the date on. 
Let's go ahead and add the date to this little placard. You can use an edible marker or you can paint it on. I'm probably just going to paint it on. We're going to come in and airbrush just a tiny bit across the top with the white. Nothing extreme. Just the beginning of our snowfall on the top. That's it. Just a, just a tiny bit. Come in and start adding your snowflakes. We want to add more at the top and just sort of taper them down to get lighter as they fall. Maybe add a little one here, a few to his head. Maybe a couple on his scarf. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I want you to let the snowflakes dry before we move on to the very last step. Last but not least, I told you I'd show you that little trick with the corn syrup. All I did was I took a mixture of corn syrup and water. And again, it's thin, but it has some body to it. And what we're going to do is we're going to run this through the airbrush, and we're going to spray it on there, and it's going to give us a nice sheen to our snow globe. It doesn't really take a lot. I'm just going to add a couple of layers of the corn syrup and water mixture to the top of this and it will dry completely if you want to package it up. Um, you don't have to worry about it sticking. Um, you can see here I did the same thing to this one. It gave a little bit of shine. You can see a little bit of shine on that and it's perfectly dry. But I'm going to avoid the bottom section of this. I'm just going to try to get this on here to give it that glassy globe look. So you can see it gives it just a nice little sheen at the top of your snow globe and when it when it dries you'll still have that shiny look to the top of it. I also like to use that on stained glass cookies and just other things you might want to shine on. And that is it for our Teddy Bear Snow Globe cookie tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do attempt to make this cookie, give us a tag on our social media. I would love to see what you guys create.